Hi, again, my name is Lusana Schutz and I am presenting this case on seizures. We are now to part three of this case. If we recall, our case was a 25-year-old man brought in by family with complaint of unresponsiveness and jerking movement of his body starting 10 minutes prior to arrival. We have been going through systematically the four goals of seizure management, including assuring oxygen delivery with your initial assessment, uh, addressing airway, breathing, and circulation, stopping the seizure as soon as possible, diagnosing and treating an underlying cause, and now we're going to talk about preventing further seizures. So again, we're going to put all of our information together, think about what's going on with this patient. We, he came in with a seizure. In his workup, we found uh, lesions on his CT scan of his head. We talked to his family more, and they have a diet that commonly includes pork. So we're thinking about what could be causing these lesions in the head. And one thing that we should consider is neurocysticercosis. This is a CNS infection with the larval stage of tinea solium. This is a parasite or worm that's commonly found in pork meat that's not well cooked. It may be asymptomatic for years, and the host response can cause inflammation and edema, which can cause seizure in patients. So again, we are going back to our emergency medicine approach, re-evaluating the patient with all the history, exam, and diagnostic testing that we have found. We're thinking about what is going on with the patient. They had a seizure, possibly they have neurocysticercosis, and then acting um, appropriately, which means consultation, further treatment, admission, and likely EEG for this patient. When you go back to reevaluate your patient after obtaining all the information, the patient has again become unresponsive and starts having tonic-clonic movement again in the arms and legs. His general appearance and level of consciousness is again unresponsive, tense, jerking movements. His airway, he has bitten his tongue, there's some blood in his mouth. He does not seem to be protecting his airway. His breathing is rapid and shallow again and his circulation shows a rapid pulse. Immediately you realize he's having seizure activity again and that you need to intervene. Um, so this could require again position uh, of the patient, suctioning, opening the airway, um, oxygen delivery, cardiac monitoring, IV, and blood glucose again. Many of these we're already doing, um, including providing oxygen, we may need to consider further airway adjuncts or airway intervention um, in this patient. So we give him two more milligrams of IV lorazepam. We continue the oxygen. We provide suctioning to get the blood out of the mouth. The patient with the two milligrams of lorazepam continues to have seizure activity. He has secretions and blood in the mouth, has rapid shallow breathing, and is tachycardic with a present pulse. Heart rate is 130 beats per minute. Respirations are 32 respirations per minute, and his oxygen saturation is 86%. Is this patient sick, we're thinking? And of course, this patient is not only sick, but more sick than he was before. We're really concerned about this patient. What defines status epilepticus? Is it A, any tonic-clonic seizure activity? Is it B, multiple seizures in a day but with return to baseline in between the seizures? Is it C, continuous seizure activity greater than five minutes? Is it D, tonic seizure activity with respiratory compromise? So one definition of status epilepticus is C, continuous seizure activity greater than five minutes. So technically upon arrival, the patient already had status epilepticus because the seizure had already lasted 10 minutes. But also in the definition, is multiple seizures without return to baseline mental status. So the patient also has status epilepticus by this definition. This is a life-threatening illness and again needs intervention immediately for the patient to survive and to have good neurologic outcome. We give an additional two milligram IV lorazepam and think about other medications that we want to um, give the patient. Continue oxygen and airway management with suction and opening the airway and we get preparation to intubate the patient because we are concerned about this patient's airway. Again, we need to stop the seizure activity. So 
Again, looking at our anticonvulsants, um, we have given benzodiazepine twice, so we should consider the next line um, in treatment, such as phenytoin, newer medications such as levetiracetam or Keppra, and maybe even general anesthesia or barbiturate coma. Again, we look at our list of medications and the dosing, um, thinking about what we need to do next to stop the seizure as soon as possible. On reevaluation, the patient's seizure activity has seemed to stop. His airway is clear now after suctioning and seems to be stable with the nasopharyngeal airway in place. His breathing is deeper and slower, and his heart rate has slowed down and he has strong pulses. But we're still thinking and acting in our interventions. This patient has had status epilepticus, may not be seizing right now, but may start again shortly. So we're thinking the seizure does, does seem to have stopped with the additional four milligrams of Ativan IV. However, he has not returned to baseline mental status. And you should be thinking, who should be started on longer acting anticonvulsants? So anyone with structural lesions on CT scan of the head, which our patient has, also patients with focal seizures that generalize, and any patient that comes in with a second unprovoked seizure, so diagnosis of epilepsy. So if a patient has had a seizure in the past, was not started on medication, but returns with further seizures, these patients should also be started on anticonvulsants. Again, we're continuing and thinking to act uh, with this patient. So we're thinking about what are we going to what are we going to do with this patient? He's very sick, seems to have stopped his seizure activity, but he certainly needs admission. And right now, until he improves, he probably needs ICU level of care. He certainly needs neurology to become involved. So a neurology consult, who may be the admitting team or follow along with the medicine team. He needs long acting antiepileptics on board, which could be phenytoin or it could be another medication such as Keppra. He needs close monitoring and likely needs an electroencephalogram to assure that he's not still having occult seizures that we're not seeing on exam. He also needs to be treated for his underlying illness, which would be antiparasite treatment and steroids such as albendazole and dexamethasone. So which patients do we admit with seizures? We, uh, we admit patients that have prolonged seizures, that have some underlying infectious cause or under underlying cause that needs um, intervention during that hospitalization. Uh, patients that have abnormal neurologic examination, those with persistent altered level of consciousness that never return to their baseline mental status, and neonates that have seizures should also always be admitted. So in summary of this case, Remember to recognize seizure activity. You can't treat a seizure if you don't know or you don't recognize that it's happening. And remember that not all seizures present in a typical fashion. Assure oxygen delivery with addressing your airway, breathing, and circulation. Stop the seizure as soon as possible. Remember, the longer the seizure activity, the harder it is to stop and the worse outcome for your patient. Diagnose and treat the underlying cause. Use your history, your physical exam, and your diagnostic tools to narrow down your broad differential diagnosis and try to figure out what is causing your patient's seizure. And then prevent further seizure activity. Treat the underlying cause. Frequently reassess your patient and make sure that you have appropriate disposition for that patient. Being admission to the hospital may be critical care, may be the medicine or the medical unit with neurology consultation. And that summarizes our case. Again, thank you for joining us on this case um, about seizures.